Hello, welcome to Ask Kate with me, your host Kate, brought to you by the Children's Tumor Foundation. Today I'll be continuing a series of videos that I'm making that are in response to questions that came to us when we did a Facebook Live event with CTF's science team. Not all of those questions could be answered during the event, and so I'll be making some videos where I get to respond to those here. Today I'm going to respond to a question that came to us from Kristen. She asked whether there were any research or drug investigations happening to treat the, small, the neurofibromas that can happen in MF1 that are benign. So just a quick overview, what Kristen is talking about is that patients living with MF1 often develop dermal or cutaneous neurofibromas. These are small, not cancerous tumors that grow on the peripheral nerves. So often we see them on the arms, the legs, but they can occur on the face, the trunk, really anywhere. And they are benign, meaning they're not cancer. And they generally don't grow in size very significantly over time, but you can continue to get new ones that develop. We often see new neurofibromas developing during um, high hormonal times. So puberty or pregnancy are times when you might see an increase in the number of neurofibromas of this type. So Kristen's question is great. And so the first answer is that yes, there is research being done about the treatment of these types of tumors. A lot of times the neurofibromas like these do not cause a lot of significant medical problems. They can be painful locally. So they might be in a location where maybe your clothing rubs on them in some way. Maybe you have them under your hair. So brushing your hair can be very painful. And so it's not to say that they aren't an issue, um, only to say that they are not causing illness in terms of, again, they're not cancerous. However, they are also a significant cosmetic frustration for patients living with NF1. They can be something that other people notice or comment on or, or unkind or rude. They can cause people to stare at you. And it's just, it's very difficult for our patients living with NF1 um, to, to live with the number of neurofibromas that some people develop. So there is research being done looking at different treatments. For example, currently they're looking at selumetinib for the treatment of dermal neurofibromas. Um, which is the drug that was also just approved to treat plexiform neurofibromas, which is a different type of tumor that you can see in MF1. So they are looking into um, both drug treatments as well as there's photodynamic therapy that one group is looking at. And so we are definitely taking that seriously, and CTF is a part of funding that important research so that we can find answers for the treatment of these tumors. The other thing I want to mention is that there is current treatment available for these types of neurofibromas. Um, the most common one or that I um, am asked about quite frequently is called electrodesiccation, which is a really big word. But essentially, it means it's a procedure where they apply uh, electric current to the tumor directly, um, just locally and directly. It's very high voltage current, and what it will do is dry out the unwanted cells so that it will kind of shrink and disappear the, the tumor itself. Um, the nice thing about this procedure is that it's not terribly painful. It can be done in an office. It's not something you have to be put to sleep for um, or have a big recovery time from. It's not surgery where they're cutting, where they're like, you know, making a cut and then leaving a scar. Um, so that is something patients really appreciate. Um, it's not a procedure that's done um, widely. Um, I do actually have a list of providers who will do this procedure. It's by no means an exhaustive list. Um, usually what I recommend to people is that if they don't live in one of the areas where the doctors live that I have their names, um, is to start by talking possibly to a plastic surgeon. A lot of times that's who might be doing this procedure. A dermatologist would be another person that you could speak to about that. So I'm really, I really appreciate this question. Hopefully this has been helpful to people that are asking the same thing. As always, please feel free to um, leave a comment below. If you've had electric desiccation, I would actually love to hear from you about your experience. And I think you, know, you can, of course, email me. But I think if you would leave a comment here, it would be so helpful to the rest of the MS community about what that experience was like and if you've been happy with your results. Um, and just kind of share you know, from a first-person perspective about that. Um, I think people would really appreciate that. So again, as always, please leave comments, ask questions, or reach out to me directly. I love hearing from you guys. Have a great day.